Well, it's obvious. We got a barren heat up there. What is it? <laughs> well, it was very nice. Obviously, you can read. Now, let's see if you can laugh. I mean, boy, what's going? Freddie back came backstage just before I walked out, and he says, "You're going to want to take this audience home with you." Right. Great. And if I knew. And if I knew where my home was, I'd take you there. <laughs> I, uh, Friday Night Crowds, I hope you save your ticket stuff. We're gonna hold a drawing later. And if you are a registered voter and you win, you will get to host this show at least once in your life. <laughs> Unless, of course, you have a doctor's certificate. <laughs> Was there a joke there? <laughs> Where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? No, no. I... <laughs> Someday you're gonna find yourself and be disappointed. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I know you're Tommy. Where's oh. Doc? Doc is in, uh, wait a minute, Nassau. The Bahamas? No, Nassau, Long Island. Oh. <laughs> He'd probably rather be in the Bahamas, all right? What's he doing in Nassau, Long Island? He's Concertizing. Oh, concertizing, okay. Uh, so when Doc is out concertizing, Tommy Newsome fills in, as you know. Tommy uh, does not exactly live in the, in the fast lane. Uh, <laughs> Tommy's idea of living dangerously is to eat his yogurt on the day the freshness date expires. <laughs> Oh, you're in a good, this will be fun. You're in a good mood tonight. It's happy birthday time. Ronald Reagan is 76 years old today. Yeah. Yeah, happy birthday. That's right yeah. And he's got a lot of gifts. Uh, the Ayatollah of Moran sent President Reagan a, thought, a thoughtful birthday gift. It was a uh, autographed copy of the Koran, the swimsuit edition. <laughs> it just sounded silly, I don't know. And they had a party. It was kind of a touching scene. The White House staff stood around singing happy birthday as they packed their bags. <laughs> Some of them are leaving, do you know? Speaking of birthdays, I'll bet, unless you read this in the news, you know what else is 50 years old today? It was in the paper? No, it's not a person. You see this? Spam. <laughs> Spam. I thought Spam was 50 years old when I first tried it. <laughs> 50 years old. How many of you guys were in the service remember Spam very well? Yeah. Spam actually helped us win World War II. Because after you ate Spam, you were damn fighting mad. <laughs> Speaking of... <clears throat> <clears throat> I think I'll go to e whipped after the show. <laughs> um, you know what else is 100 years old today? Hollywood Boulevard. City of Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard. Hollywood Boulevard was actually discovered in 1887 by the explorer Ponce de Weirdo. <laughs> As a haven for men who wanted to see an adult film uh, without being spotted. It would just be a great spot. <laughs> Now, you want to see some interesting television coming? How many of you get a, a channel called the Discovery Channel on satellite? Yeah. Soon they're going to show, start showing 62 hours of programming, Russian programs, actually as they were produced in Russia. So I guess we don't get it on regular network, but on the Discovery Channel. Can you, are you ready for a game show? Like, name that tractor? <laughs> and they're gonna have... <laughs> They're gonna have the Russian version of The Price is Right. Behind curtain number one is a fur coat. And behind curtain number two is a KGB agent. So, and as a bonus, I have three of these. Three. <laughs> you know the old comedy rule? As a bonus, a show featuring a little old lady who gives sex advice to the Politburo called Ask Dr. Ruthless. <laughs> You all, we've talked about this before. What is the stock market today? It's going, but do anybody understand what's going on? The Dow, oh, Dow Jones is up to what, no. 2,000, now it's 2,200 or something like yeah. that? 
Are you in the... A little bit, yes. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you? What? Aren't you? No, I'm not. You know my financial advisor. Yeah. Bombastic Bushkin. Right. <laughs> yeah. He invested all of my money in Ferdinand Marcos uh, exercise tapes. <laughs> well, you probably... You, you got everything going. You got Star Search. You're here. I, I get uh, envelopes with your picture on them. <laughs> Promise me I'm going to win a million bucks. And I saw you the other night doing, and I won't mention the, the company because I uh, want to sound like it's conflict of interest. D you're doing an ad for a, a, a life insurance company? No. Right? And you said in that, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Big deal. There's a girl on Sunset Boulevard makes the same promise. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy time tonight. You're in a good mood. We've got a, an exciting show. Later on, you didn't uh, mention it, but Vanna White. We ought to be out here to plug her a new book called A Finger is a Terrible Thing to Waste. <laughs> Stumbling on my star. <laughs> Is that a song, Stumbling on My Star? <laughs> I know that, yes. <laughs> Where's Tommy? Anyway, tonight a couple of uh, lovely ladies. Miss Shelley Long from Cheers. <laughs> and another marvelous actress from Scandinavia, Lee Vullman. <laughs> A young man making his first appearance on this show, and he's a funny guy. Bob Nelson is here tonight. So stay where you are. We'll be here. Ladies and gentlemen, what a night. It is time once again for a visit from that stranger from the East. Yes, the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-telling, famous seer, sage, soothsayer, and former elocution teacher to Tony Danza, Karnak the Magnificent. Welcome, welcome, oh great sage. May a thousand blessings flow all over your body. Thank you. I hold in my hands the envelopes. A child of four could plainly see these envelopes are completely sealed, hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funkin' Wagnall's porch since noon today. No one knows the answers inside these envelopes. But you, in your mystical and borderline divine way, will ascertain the answers how I've never heard the question. We are ready for number one. An impossible feat. Yes, but you shall do it. May we have absolute silence, please. Many times you receive that. <laughs> Obviously, you have many funds put away. <laughs> the answer to this question? Hermetically sealed. And I will divine the answer, having not seen the question. Funk and Wagnall's port. <laughs> Since noon today. Goody two-shoes. Goody two-shoes. <laughs> <laughs> what were Melda Marcus's first words at birth? Send it through the mail, check it with the airlines, or eat in the NBC commissary. <laughs> Name three ways to lose your lunch. <clears throat> A 
A month of Sundays. A month of Sundays. <laughs> what does Oprah Winfrey usually order for dessert? Moonlighting. Moonlighting. That's right, moonlighting. <laughs> what do you call backing up nude into a campfire? <laughs> <laughs> the Discover Card. What did Christopher Columbus use to pay his New World bar tab? May the America's Cup team batten down your wife. Okay. <laughs> Red Snapper. Red Snapper. You got it, Charlie. <laughs> what do you call the metal fastener on a commie's zipper? The color of money. The color of money. <laughs> when Oral Roberts gets frightened, what does his face turn? <laughs> Down under. How would you begin a goose eulogy? How would you begin a goose eulogy? How would you begin a goose eulogy? Down, down, down. <laughs> Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, and Napoleon. What names does Shirley MacLaine give as references? Ramalama Ding Dong. <laughs> Describe the sound a good humor truck makes when it hits a llama. <laughs> I hold in my hand the last envelope. May your doctor tell you that your Shelley is not too long. <laughs> the hell is this? Yes. <laughs> Oliver North, John Poindexter, and Ed McMahon. <laughs> Name two guys who took the fifth and one who drank it. <laughs> Right, Doc Severns in, indeed is back in Nassau, New York, and he's going to be appearing tomorrow night, seventh of the month, with the Nassau Symphony of New York. And on Sunday, Doc's going to be with his group Zebron, which is a great jazz fusion group, February the 8th at Cornell College in Mount Vernon. So if you're in that area, drop in and see him. Now, tomorrow night, I want to mention David Letterman is celebrating, can you believe already, his fifth I saw that anniversary special? I couldn't believe it. And it is on tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, David's highly insecure. He thinks nobody's going to watch. <laughs> he really is. He's insecure. Tomorrow night at, at, at 11.30 on NBC will be David's fifth anniversary, so it should be a lot of fun. They're going to show a lot of the things they've done and some other stuff. Now, my first guest, you all know, she is a, a fine actress um, in both film and television. Uh, Cheers has been on how many years? 
four, four or five years oh, yeah. already. And her latest movie, she's received some outstanding personal notices. She's uh, Bette Midler. Bette Midler is also in the movie. It's titled Outrageous Fortune. Would you welcome Miss Shelley Long? Don't you look super tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You like Thank dressing you. up? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. You inspire me. I, oh, come I don't on. always feel inspired to dress up, but I like to come and do your show and yeah. say hi to you people. If you're not, if you, yeah. if you're not working, if yeah. you're not working, just hanging out. What is it, jeans and? Are clothes important? That's, I guess, what I'm asking. Well, I I think they are in the way that uh, they reflect how you feel. If you feel like. Being casual and wearing pants or whatever, you know, great. Yeah. If you feel like dressing up, then you grab something really flashy and fun out of your closet and say, yeah, that's the one for today. <laughs> does it change your mood if you go on, if you dress certain? It does. In fact, um, I was going to wear something else tonight, and I thought, no, that's not right. So we dare went I through ask, and... Dare I ask what you were going to wear? I was going to wear blue. I just didn't feel like blue oh, tonight. So black, black I didn't feel tonight. blue. I guess I felt yeah. something different. Well, anyway, it's very pretty. Thank you. Outrageous Thank you. fortune is getting... Big notices already. Yeah. Must make you very happy. Oh, yeah. I'm a little swept away by it all. No, I, ha I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go see it. And I, I wish I had before Good. you here, because it's not fair sometimes bring somebody up and say, hey, I hear it. But I hear it is a great movie. It is, yes. And it's, you do um, lots of different accents in the picture, I understand. I do, yes. I play an actress. Right. And um, I play a very serious actress who has studied very hard and, and does her fencing and um, her ballet and has studied all of elocution and all those things. And, uh, and then I get myself in a mess. I fall in love with a guy and uh, he turns out to be not so good and he's also fooling around with uh, this other lady that Bette plays. And uh, so then we, we sort of get swept up to, into an espionage kind of thing. And yeah. we have to find him or we want to find him to find out what's going on. And, and um, I, so I use accents in different situations to get information yeah. from people. Do they or, come easy for you? Um, for the most part they do. Where'd you grow up? Well, I grew up in Indiana. Now most people grew up in New York. I can understand somebody who grew up in New York because you're around different accents all the time, but how in Indiana did you pick up on it? Uh, well, I didn't know the New York accent, and I, or there are many actually in New York, so I had to study that because I had to do it in the film. I play, in a moment, I try and be a real tough cop, so I do a kind of Bronx, Brooklyn accent I had to I study. How that sound? Just a little bit. <clears throat> well, I have to sort of delete some of the words I yeah, say well, in the scene. Right? Um, <clears throat> Even though we're on late at night, we're not that late. It's Police, you're under arrest. Yeah, you sent New York. Don't even think about it. Now I New have York. to stop. Yes. Because if anyone's seen the film, they know what the next thing is that I say. <laughs> that bad. Up against the wall. The wall. I'm yeah. gonna squeegee your brains off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. How about French, Russian, Czechoslovakian? French. Well, now, the thing about um, Lauren, as an actress, you know, I'm sure she would study very hard if she were assigned a specific accent, but she's sort of, you know, pulling them off the top of right. her head. Um, so, you know, my French would be more of how you oh, think the French you. speak than how actually the French speak, but it has some of the feeling of the French, you know? You know why French is good? No matter what you say. It sounds so It good. sounds wonderful. Yes. It's like a restaurant. They mm. say, La Grenouille. Yes. Now, if you said that in English, it's the frog. Would you go to the frog <laughs> to eat? Or le bec, le bec rouge. Yes. Isn't that the red box or something? Yeah. What's the difference? But it sounds, sounds everything familiar. sounds good. How are you, Johnny? I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> I know you're from the Midwest. I have a relative that sounds something like that. Say, yes. Yes, that um, I have a character I used to do at the Second City called Mildred. And uh, she's sort of a combination of many wonderful ladies I know from the Midwest. And they, we, we kind of talk up here. I don't know why that is, it's, but it just feels better than down here, you know? <laughs> That's kind of Kansas, uh, Kansas, Yeah, Nebraska well, Indiana. Or, yeah. or um, now, there's another sort of tone that I played with in the film because my, my acting teacher is Russian in the film, which Russia, gets us into the... Russian. Yes, yeah. it always seems to come down here, you know? Even if you say the words the same, it comes from law. <laughs> it's know? like if you play a record backwards. Yes. It sounds like pretty good Russian. Yes. 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 
<laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tommy. Throw the bottle down. Indiana, huh? Yeah, Hoosier. The Hoosier State, Hoosier yeah. State, yeah. Indiana. Fort Wayne. When did you start finding out in your own mind, you said, someday I want to be an actress? When you were in, when you in school? No, before that. I was, uh, I've told this story, but, uh, I don't know exactly how old I was, young, little, because I remember looking up to answer the question. And uh, somebody said, well, Shelley, what do you want to be? I'd never met this woman before. What do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, without thinking, a clown. Clown. Well, actors are clowns. And you know, I don't even know. Yes, they are, I think. And You're hiding behind clowns, them. Certainly like Emmett Kelly, you know, do both the sad side and the happy side. Yeah. You know? Well, I always thought he was so wonderful. But yeah, I guess, and I don't even know that I'd ever seen a clown. Yeah, that's funny. And I didn't head directly for that in my ambitions. I kind of experimented with a lot of things. But yeah. the acting kept coming up. I love to sing. Have you done I've, that? You've done that? I have done that. I haven't done much of it. Well, I did a little on the Emmys, which was a lot of fun. It was really music and singing that yeah. got me into show business. Yeah. Now, we were talking about accents before, and now we're going to show a little film clip from Outrageous oh, okay. Fortune. You play uh, Eastern European. I, well, I'm an actress right. doing this accent to get information out of right. the airline lady that we need to find this guy. So this is kind of, uh, what would you call it, Czechoslovakian? Uh, yes, yes. I sort of did what was written there. But, yeah. And uh, at this point, Bette's character, Sandy, is, uh, we're not the greatest of friends at this point, but we're trying to work together to get the same information we both need. Okay, let's take a look. Here's a little excerpt from Outrageous Fortune. Nine. They don't give out passenger lists. You have to be police or FBI. You are such a dip. This is all the FBI we need. His luggage was totally over the weight limit. Can you imagine the gall trying to bribe an airline official? Oh. He offered me $100 to let it go through. Oh, what a world, I'll tell you. Please, I was hoping you would help me. Uh, how, how do I to say? You say it quickly, I'm off in three minutes. My father is coming here. We, no, I tell you from the beginning. My name is Anna. This is my sister, Elona, my half-sister. She does not speak English. My father, we have not seen him since we lost babies. He brought, he sent us here in suitcase on train. We escape, you see? No, I'm afraid I don't. No, we get letter. He escaped. Which plane? Please. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. He's on the wind. 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 Single biggest crock I've ever had the privilege to hear in my 19 years at this airline. I think that deserves something. That's funny. Good thing. Funny too. The lady's funny too. Good stuff. Now, I suppose you're getting tired about asking, uh, being asked the question, why you're leaving, decided to leave. Yeah, I am. Cheers. Can we just move right is, on yeah. there? No, but I had to touch I on know, it. It's such I a know. hot show, and it's I such know. a good show, and you're it's marvelous a in it. Show. Oh, thank and I understand you. that everybody, you know, wants to go other directions in their life, but did you have any uh, ambivalent feelings about it? Yes, of course I did. Sure. Um, I had pretty much decided that I would not add another year to my contract. Mm -hmm. Um, last year, and then the closer it got to the expiration of my five-year term, the more difficult it got to really think about it. And uh, so I talked to the producers again, and Ted and I talked about it. And then I, you know, went back home again and talked with my husband and my family and yeah. my other advisors. And then I just had to take some time and 
and really look inside and see what I felt needed to happen. Yeah. Because I do love these people and the show has been great and I love our audiences who are always so great about saying that they love the show and how much they care about Diane and Sam and, yeah. and that's wonderful to hear and it'll be hard even for yeah. me to not see Sam and Diane. I watched yeah. you. But well the show's been very good to you and you've been very has. good to the show and Thank it takes you. a certain amount of, of, of courage to leave a show when, it, when it's hot like that, so... Well, you know, the irony of that, thank you, um, is that when I auditioned or went in to talk to the producers and I felt something, I felt like, gee, this is such a great character. I'd read just one script, but I knew yeah. it was fabulous. I had no idea we'd last for five years or, or what would happen in those five years, but I had a gut instinct. Right. And a lot... I had started making movies and I think I'd already done two or three or four. And people said, what, are you crazy? You, you started your movie career. But my gut told me this is something no. real special. And my gut was right. So now my gut's telling me, you've done it. You've done your best. Now let's, let's take some time for the family, yeah. for my uh, contract with Disney, which I'm real excited so, about. Uh, anyways, it's always, it's, always best to, it's always best to work from your own natural instincts, because they usually turn out to be right. I think so. Yeah. And, you know, it's real easy to listen to very well-intended <laughs> people, you know, yeah. who want to offer their advice. And But I do think that all of us, each of us, have to yeah. look inside and see yeah. what the priorities are. Anyway, so. I thank you for being here. I hope Outrageous Fortune is going to be a big hit for you, and I hope uh, your career just keeps going up and up. Thank Would you. Would you come back and see us? Of course. I love seeing Hey, thank you, Cheryl. I love thank you, you too. <laughs> Nice lady, yeah, very nice lady. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Uh, Bob Nelson is here, and Lee Vogel. Okay, this next young man. <laughs> I'm glad that Bob Nelson is here on a Friday night. Friday night audiences are great mm -hmm. for comedians, and this is his first appearance on the Tonight Show. Uh, Bob's from New York. He uh, works regularly there at uh, Caroline's in Manhattan. Would you welcome, please, Bob Nelson? Bob. <laughs> First uh, tonight show, and I'll uh, tell you, I'm a little, little nervous, a little excited, uh, a little uncomfortable. I don't know why. Just a uh, little. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> do you like boxing? Do you like boxing? Good. I'm glad because uh, I'd like to do a little boxing character that I do here, and uh, he's going to come out. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about the boxing world. He's going to give you some pointers. Okay? All right. Yeah. Take me a second to get this on. Probably take me uh, like half of, half of my set. <laughs> I was serious. It will take me like ten minutes. <laughs> oh, I have to go go now. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Jiffy Jeff. sitting there. Uh, my, my name is Jiffy Jeff and I own a gym. I just opened my own gym. Jim, Jim, James, Tom, Pete, Harry, come on in, it's time for dinner. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, no, no, I want to talk to you about boxing. I'm going to give you four tips, four very important things you must learn in order to become a fighter, okay? Okay. Uh, four very important things. Four. I will give you four of them. Four. 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 Tips. Okay, four of them. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop the fight! Stop the fight! What am I talking about? Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. Let's let's do the four free tips. Let's start with number one. In order, in order to do this, do this. Simon says to this. Simon says to this. Simon says to this. Simon says to this. What am I doing? What am I doing this for? I'm sorry. Okay, let's start with number one. Number one, number one is training. Training is very important. Work out every day. Training. That is number one. Training. Training. That's number one. Okay. Okay, now, some guys take the train from their home into the city every day, which is also another type of training. 
Training on top of training. A lot of training going on. If you do take the train, get a monthly ticket, get a monthly ticket. I have a monthly ticket. I don't take the train, but it's such a bargain. I tell them anyway. Okay. So now you know where I'm coming from. Right back there. Okay, that's number one, training. Number two, number two, two. Okay, I lost my train of thought. That's all right, though. I'll catch, I'll catch the next one. Okay, number two, right up there, number two. Number two ball, number two ball. Out of the way, combination shot, two ball. Sorry. No, two. Number two, training. Number one is training. Number two, number two. Number two is a, you need a nick, you need a nick, you need a nick, 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 nick. Patty, whack, give the dog a bone. No, you need a nick, nick, nick. You need a nick, you need a nick name. You need a name, 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 name. Five seconds, five seconds to name. Do you know him, do you know him? I don't know him. Uh, no, you need a nickname. Every great fighter has a good nickname, like that. Uh... Oh, oh, Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney is a very good fighter. They call him Gentleman. Gentleman Jerry Cooney. They call him Gentleman, 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 Gentleman. Start your engines. They call him Gentleman. Gentleman Jerry Cooney. And you know why? You know why they call him Gentleman? You know why? You know why? You know why? I have no idea why. But they do call him that. It works. Here's another fighter. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. They call him Marvelous. You know why they call him Marvelous? Because he looks there. Good. So that's what it comes to. And uh, I, 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 J, K, L, M, N, O, P. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you something here. I have a nickname. 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 <laughs> I have a nickname. They call me, they call me, they call me Jeff. They call me Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. What? 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 <laughs> Anyway, you probably, okay, now you probably look, you're probably looking at me saying, this guy knows nothing about the fight game. You probably look, you probably look, 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 look. Major look. You're probably looking at me. Look, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me. I, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I've been in the fight game many years. I, I've had alto training, alto training, alto, alto. A lot, I spelled that wrong. A lot of training, a lot of training. I was a professional fighter at one time. I had I had a couple of professional fights. I had what? I had how many fights? I, I had what? I had what? 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 Oh, I had six professional fights, of which I lost 11. But uh, I don't remember. I remember this, though. One time I'm in the ring with Hagler, Marvin, Hagler, Marvin, Hagler, Marvin, Hagler. One of those guys? What are you arguing about? It doesn't matter. Anyway, I remember I'm in the ring once, and uh, Hagler's hitting me. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. And my knees buckle. I'm trying to get the buckle open. I don't know how my pants got down there. I can't get it open. He hits me again. I go right down, and my, my face slammed right into the canvas, which was very odd, because I landed on my back. <laughs> so come on down to my gym. Don't forget the four free pointers I've just given you. Number one, training. Number two, nickname. Number three, Training. Uh, those four things are very important. If you have any questions, come on down to my gym, or you can call me at 555-4343. That number, once again, in case you missed it, 555-7299. And ask for Jiffy, Jeff, 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 what, what, what? <laughs> Boy, that's funny. funny. <laughs> you, you won't laugh any harder in five or six minutes than you laughed at that guy, Bob Nelson. He's, that's wonderful. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> My next guess is leave, 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 leave. <laughs> <laughs> leave Oldman is probably the best known, noted Scandinavian actress since, I guess, the days of Garbo and Bergman, and not only a, a marvelous actress, but an impressive writer who's also found time to become uh, deeply involved, uh, involved with UNICEF, which brings her to Los Angeles. Would you welcome, please, Miss Leave Oldman? <laughs> It's so nice to see you again. 
It's very nice to see you. You almost broke up my marriage, you know. Yeah, we better explain what happened. Now, last, <laughs> the last time you were on the show, uh, it was the first time we'd actually met. Yeah, you thought I was too heavy before, so... Oh, no, no heavy? No, uh, in my conversation. Well, not heavy, but we kind started serious. to... serious. Yeah, we... Well, we were kind of flirting, in a way. Oh, on the on... show? Yeah. Yes, then. We're... But before, why I wasn't with you before? All these years I've been in America. I was never here before that time when we flirted. Yeah. Well, well, I, I don't know why that was. Well, I didn't know we were flirting, but uh, it kind of happened. Something. Yeah, and you were being very complimentary, and I was being very complimentary to you, and uh, I, you got you in some trouble or what? Well, you see, um, the sh my husband was then in, in Boston, and we hadn't been married that long, and yeah. he's not in show business either. Yeah. And uh, he was watching it three hours before it was sent here, and I wasn't home after he had watched it. Right. And you had said something about, at the end of the show, you know where I'm going now. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> you were really, we were making contact, and I said, well, you know where I'll be going after the show, right? I know, and uh, so I came home late, and he was sure I was with you. <laughs> Well, I've had a lot. I've had a lot of problems before, but that's not not. <laughs> did you explain to him that sometimes people in the entertainment business do those things because they're kind of silly and? Well, I tried to, but I I really liked you, and he he saw that. And <laughs> I, I, I like you too. <laughs> and I think I met. Was that that was your husband? Yes, he came. I mean, he never goes when I do a television thing. Never. And today he insisted. <laughs> and, and we were talking, and I wasn't about to, to introduce him because I thought if you didn't know I was married, maybe we could flirt well, again. I... <laughs> well, like you were sitting in a makeup chair, and I started to, and we were talking, and all of a sudden I turned around, and this man is standing right there. I know, and, and he that... said, We are married. He says, that. <laughs> I'm her husband. <laughs> nice, very nice, nice fella. He's very nice, yeah. and you are engaged anyway since. Yeah, you know, I have a. I believe in long engagements. You do. <laughs> were you engaged long before you were married? <clears throat> no, I wasn't engaged at all. But you see, I had been married once before. Well. <laughs> I'm not Mother Teresa myself, you know. <laughs> no, I had been married once before too. Really. <laughs> And two, and two. Uh, well, so you... in, in Norway, if you have been married once, kind of, if you do it again, you do it very quickly, and no engagement, and oh, I quiet see. marriage. Did, so, were you married quietly and just privately? Kind of privately, but beautifully. Were you engaged beautifully? Beautiful. It was just, you know, nothing big about it. I just said, would you like to get engaged? <laughs> that was that. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> How long's hubby gonna be out this trip? <laughs> now tell him we're just kidding. I mean, he's watching backstage this moment. I'm not is he kidding. Is he jealous? <laughs> I didn't know. Is he, he Scandinavian? Was... No, he's American oh, he's from Mar Boston. I didn't know he was jealous before you. Oh, I see. But... <laughs> But now I know. Yeah. Well, anyways, he's very nice. Marriage is going well and everything? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well if it doesn't, you know where I'm at. <laughs> Why don't you dump him? I'll get unengaged. Let's get married. <laughs> No, now my, now my girl, you see, has, has a good sense of humor. <laughs> a real good sense of humor. She'll think this is really, really amusing. Yes. <laughs> and she'll know that we're just really kind of kidding, aren't we? <laughs> do you have children? Yes, I do. Do you have children? Yeah, I have a, a 20 year old. Yeah. She's here too. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have three boys. How old? Well, my oldest is, uh, is 36. I have one 34 and one 33. And they're all married? None of them are married. Oh! <laughs> Never, ever. It's unusual, isn't it? That's very unusual. Well, we could be in-laws, maybe.
You want me badly, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever possessed me to say that, I'll never know. I just, I just ran out of things to talk about. <laughs> well, maybe we should talk about something else. Um... <laughs> what do you mean, no? Uh, this is, this is what, what, do you, what do you find, all right, what do, what do you find the toughest thing is in a marriage, seriously? I mean, I mean, the, what makes a marriage really stick together? What makes... <laughs> What makes a marriage fly apart? <laughs> is, a sen is a sense of humor important? Yes, that's very important. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I think maybe giving up your um, independence and uh, not be free to do everything you did before you were married. That's right. I would say, and... Um, you take your commitment very seriously. Well, if you choose to get married, especially at uh, our age, I think we have to take it serious. <laughs> Wait a minute, we're not Ma and Pa Kettle, you know, what I mean? I didn't say that. Oh. Our age, I mean, anything Mature. over 30 in Hollywood is yes. kind of uh, old, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> well, that's the way Hollywood looks at it, you know. <laughs> I know. But, I mean, there's no reason to get married, maybe, if you don't think it is... Uh, a commitment. Yeah. What, what do you feel is the difficult thing in marriage? What? What is the most difficult thing in marriage for you? Gee, I wish I had time to answer that. <laughs> but we have to take a break, but we'll be right back. <laughs> we seem to have run out of time. Unfortunately. Yes. Would you come back with us again sometime? I'd love to. Yeah. And you're, you're going to tell your husband this was all kind of just fun and games, right? <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're really a marvelous guest. <laughs> Next week, I'm, I'm canceling because we're going to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm humbled by that applause.